Some of the world's resources are seemingly impenetrable. It is unlikely any foreseeable human activity could stop the sun's rays, the wind, or the earth's magnetic field. However, other resources are much more at risk, so steps must be taken to preserve them. Regenerative agriculture are farming methods which maintain or improve soil health rather than degrading it. This can be achieved through less ploughing, which disrupts organisms in the soil and releases carbon. Planting nitrogen fixes and cover crops instead of monocrops increases variation that replenishes soil nutrients and prevents erosion. Using organic manures and compost leads to healthier soil and wildlife, massively decreasing the herbicides and pesticides needed. A simple but effective way for us to reduce the negative effects that livestock have is to consume less meat and animal-based products. In fact, some scientists suggest this is the single biggest way to reduce your environmental impact on the planet. In place of meats, plant-based alternatives are becoming increasingly popular, whilst lab-grown meats are also rapidly developing. Some experts predict that these could surpass animal-based meat in price and quality as soon as 2035, resulting in livestock industry demand decreasing. In the meantime, certain substances can also be added to livestock feed in order to reduce both their methane emissions and their pollutants in their waste. Reduced meat demand would also reduce deforestation. However, further steps are needed to properly address the issue. 70% of Indonesia's timber exports come from illegal logging, with similar figures in other nations requiring stricter government regulation. The UK can try to encourage this by providing conditional aid, boycotting, or by changing the rules for UK companies. For example, a new law in the Environment Bill will make it illegal for UK businesses to use resources not produced in line with local laws protecting forests. Reforestation is also key in replacing areas that have already been cut down, with many now recognising the extensive benefits, including counteracting desertification, Governments and charities alike have begun major replanting programs. We cannot, however, replenish the minerals we mine from the earth, so recycling will be critical to allowing us to continue producing goods. Recycling plastics has the added benefit of preventing them from entering the ocean, which is why it's important not to use non-recyclable single-use plastics. There have also been efforts to remove the waste that has already been deposited. For instance, Ocean Cleanup is currently testing a device that can trawl the ocean for trash. Similarly, Four Ocean employs local people to collect waste by hand from the coastline around them, which they then convert into a range of products to finance the operation. The ocean can also provide a solution to the lack of fresh water through desalination, where evaporation or filtration is used to remove salt from the water. However, this uses lots of energy and the highly concentrated saline side product must be disposed of correctly as it can impact ocean ecosystems. Current fishing practices similarly devastate ecosystems. However, in the same way as with livestock, a reduction in fish consumption would help this. Fishing could then be kept at sustainable levels, with quotas on the amount caught and ecosystem-based management techniques being prioritised, decreasing the negative consequences for marine habitats and sea life. Above the waves, keeping our air clean is of paramount importance. We must lower our emissions through the use of renewable energy, electric vehicles and cleaner fuels. There are already efforts to reduce pollution in cities specifically, with policy changes such as the implementation of low emission zones, public bike hire schemes and e-scooter trials happening in cities across the UK. Legislation is key to conserving our natural resources. Polluter pays policies make damaging the environment prohibitively expensive for individuals and businesses. This measurement and accountability can be difficult, with consumers often bearing the burden rather than producers. However, initiatives such as the right to repair and the UK carbon price floor have been brought in successfully. Fundamentally, we must reduce our consumption of the Earth's natural resources if we wish for them to remain sustainable. Worldwide, we currently consume 1.6 Earth's worth of resources, and in the UK that figure is 4.2 Earth's. One method to achieve this would be for a transition to a circular economy. This would mean products are always designed to be reused or repurposed. Energy is renewable, and our need to use non-renewable resources would massively decrease. To recap, Societal changes are needed to reach a state where natural resources are no longer threatened. Regenerative farming, lab-based meats and sustainable fishing could all change the way we get our food, whilst reforestation, legislation and ocean trash collection preserve and repair our environment. And finally, clean transport, efficient recycling and a circular economy will change the way we live. In combination, these measures give us a fighting chance of preserving the earth and all its gifts.